With Ornatrix for Cinema 4D you can gain great control by exporting various hair pipeline properties directly to Arnold Renderer when you render your scenes. This gives you an opportunity to create various different effects such as random colors or being able to color the hair for very specific colors in specific places and do various other things. So let's quickly check this out. I've set up my scene already, so I have this uh, basic character with some very basic hair and it's using Arnold as its main renderer. You can grab Arnold on Autodesk site and you can install either a demo or a full version depending if you have a license or not. And I've created a uh, global scene light. Otherwise, there is nothing set up about the scene from the default values. So first thing I'm going to do is to create a, an Arnold hair texture and I'm going to assign it to my hair. If I go to this panel over here and I use the create button, uh, I can go to my Arnold settings and create a standard hair shader under the surface menu. I can assign the standard hair shader to my hair by just dragging and dropping it directly onto my hair and I can see the tag here which means that the fur ball will be rendered with the standard hair. Let's just quickly verify that uh, the hair ch shader indeed changed for my hair by rendering the scene. So as you can see uh, the hair shading has changed indeed. So I'm going to double click on my uh, hair icon here and in the material editor properties in the Arnold settings I'm going to open the network editor. This gives me this window where we can see that the standard hair is being applied to the beauty pass. Let's say I want to control a specific property of this hair with a strand channel that is being generated and passed through the operator stack in the furball over here. So first thing I'm going to do is uh, determine which property I, I want to control. For example, uh, in diffuse right now, the weight is set to zero and uh, let's set the color to something, maybe uh, like a red color. So it's very visible and if we change the weight to uh, completely to one and re-render the scene, the hair becomes completely red in color. So this weight property is something good to control for this demonstration purpose. I'm going to click on this part of the hair node here and select inside the main uh, menu, select the diffuse menu and then select weight to expose this input for the standard hair. And then on the left here I'm going to go to user data and drag the user data float into my view to create a, a new node. And from this output I'm going to connect it to the weight. If I click on the node itself, you can see that it has an attribute value and this attribute value is uh, something that we'll, we're going to link to a strand channel inside of our hair. Uh, so let's go back to the hair briefly. I'm going to go to edit guides and I'm just going to make sure that I have a single channel that has a value assigned to the guides. The value is going to be 1 on this right hand side of the hair and it's going to be 0 on the left hand side of the hair. To do this, I'm going to scroll down to my channels uh, channels list here. I'm going to click the Add Per Strand Channel and I'm just going to name it uh, My Channel. This can be anything you want. So you can name it Diffuse for example, but we're just going to name it My Channel here. I'm going to select My Channel and then I'm going to go into the Root Mode here. Uh, I'll just use the rectangular selection to select half of my hair, or sorry, half of my guides. I'm going to scroll down to my channels select a value of 1 which is already predefined here and I'm going to press the assign value to selection. Then just to be safe I'm going to select the other hair that's not previously selected and I'm going to set this uh, current value to 0 and I'm going to press the assign value to selection just to make sure that these guides on the left have a value of 0 and the guides on the right have a value of 1. You can verify this by, because the guides on the right now are white and the guides, guides on the left are black. So uh, now all I have to do is uh, click on this user data float and specify my channel name as the attribute name. And one last thing that we need to do is we need to actually tell Ornatrix to export this create channel to Arnold. To do this I'm going to click on my furball uh, shape over here and inside the properties we have this export part and in this section we have a list of channels that are currently present inside the hair. It's going to list both root channels and vertex channels. Uh, so we have two for now. I'm just going to select my channel to mark it for export. Whichever channels you have selected, 
will be exported for uh, Arnold during rendering and the ones that are not selected are not exported just to save some data bandwidth in case you have a lot of hair with a lot of different uh, values. So uh, now that I have my channel here and uh, the attribute is called my channel, I'm just going to go and re-render the scene. And as you see right now, all the guides that we have specified the value of one are rendering as red and all the other guides are rendering a, as black. We have made this change in edit guides so the properties for the channels get propagated further so hair from guides inherits all these values and uh, gets exported towards our Arnold renderer. The reason that we have a uh, user data float here and not something like RGB or integer or something else is because we have a single channel value. If we had for example three consecutive channels we can export an RGB channel instead. Let's try doing this. So uh, if I click on my hair from guides and I go to Ornatrix and add a generate strand data operator, I can export, I can actually create three different channels. So target data I'm going to set to a new channel. I'm going to name my channel uh, maybe just color channel. I'm going to set it as per strand. You can easily have it as per vertex as well. Uh, and then the sample value count, this value I'm going to set to 3 so that we are exporting not one channel but three channels. For generation method I'm going to set this to random. The minimum and maximum values I can leave as 0 to 1. So basically what this will do is it's going to create three separate channels and fill them with random values between 0 and 1 each. So the effect that we're trying to achieve from this is that we're going to create an RGB color channel that is going to have random colors in it. So if I go back to my furball over here and I select this color 1, 2 and 3, notice that Ornatrix automatically appended the 1, 2 and 3 suffix to my channel name. So these three consecutive channels will contain the random data that we have generated. So in here now, instead of adding a float channel, I'm going to add user data RGB channel. I'm going to go and add an input for diffuse color. And then I will drop, drag and drop my RGB uh, output into the color input. And inside this attribute for Arnold, I'm just going to select the name color. I will also disconnect our previously assigned uh, channel to the weight just so that we have a uniform color throughout the hair and now if I render my scene to the picture viewer you can see that each hair strand gets a unique random color assigned to this. So under the hood what's happening is that we have this operator stack for our hair here and inside the operator stack we have this operator called generate strand data and this operator creates a new channel which travels along the hair evaluation pipeline with our hair and it generates three channels each containing random values from 0 to 1 and we are exporting this data directly to Arnold renderer where we are importing it using this user data RGB node and pass this information to the color slot of the standard hair material. You can use the same approach to control all the other different aspects of your shading pipeline. So you control you can control luminosity or you can control the specular values of your hair or opacity or anything else really for that matter. Uh, and the, the channel data you can create by hand, you can paint it or you can generate it from attributes like hair length or curviness or things like that. So use this very powerful technique to gain very fine control over your hair shading pipeline.